So this is slide number six. And so um, if you're at home, make sure you watch. There's a couple of videos that are posted for today. Um, so we're going to introduce vectors. And vectors are something that you probably are familiar with, maybe from math, but we also talked about them last year um, when we were talking about like contact forces. So we showed them with arrows. So the bigger the arrow, um, the stronger the force. And then like the direction that the arrow was pointing, obviously it was the direction that the force was being applied. Um, so it's not a totally new idea, but there's three things that are necessary or included when we're talking about vector quantities or vector amounts. And the first one is it has to have a size, which is the magnitude, and we represent it with a number. So that's pretty easy. It also has to have a unit. So I had told you back when we did density that besides slope, everything that we're going to do in here that deal with numbers, which looks like we're going to have to include a unit now. Units become super important. And really up until this point, um, science hasn't had a whole lot of math for you guys. That's about to change, okay? Um, and so every time you have a number, you are going to need to have a unit. And I actually feel pretty confident with you guys. Um, you might surprise me, but I think that you're going to be pretty good at this. A lot of times units are what give people the biggest trouble. Units actually are going to be kind of a key or a, um, a hint as to what information is sometimes. So if you see a kilometer and you're reading a problem, you know that that number has to be some kind of distance or length because you recognize that a kilometer is a distance unit, right? If you see something in seconds, that should clue you in that that number is representing some kind of a time. So the units can actually be a lot more helpful instead of it being like a problem or just something that you forget to include. If you really learn to use the units, they can kind of decode and tell you what some information is if the wording's confusing or if you're not sure what something is in a problem. So the units can actually be really helpful. And then finally, and these are what the videos kind of talked about a little bit yesterday, that they have to include this direction, right? And in, in the one it said, um, you know, however many miles to the beach. So we don't really know what direction the beach is, but that's telling the person, hey, you're going that direction. So sometimes it can be, you know, north, south, east, west, left, right, up, down. Sometimes it can be, you know, you're going to the store or you go to, you know, going home, right? So sometimes even just including those words that you're heading to a location is enough um, of a direction. So some examples here, um, when you're talking displacement, it might be two meters north. Notice the M is for meters and then our north is capitalized and a lot of times they'll put it in brackets. But if you're talking about north, south, east, or west, typically we capitalize those directions. Okay. Velocity of 30 kilometers per hour, that divided by, usually we say per hour, and then again this is going east. And it says vector quantities are shown by an arrow um, drawn above a letter. And they started to show that in the one for the physics video, and I said, hey, we're going to skip that math a little bit. Um, next unit, we will do even more with vectors because we're going to come back to force. We're going to look at Newton's three laws of motion and uh, when you apply a force. So we're going to look at vectors again. Um, but typically, you know, an arrow, the, the thickness of it, the length of it, that's trying to show you the magnitude or size and then obviously the direction is showing the direction that whatever it's pointing, up, down, left, right, north, south, east, west, whatever it may be. Okay. Now there's also another set of quantities that are called scalar. And that's kind of a weird word, scalar. So um, the only difference between something that's scalar and something that's vector is that scalar doesn't need a direction. So some things that we're going to talk about this unit that are scalar are going to be speed, and distance. Some things that are vector are going to be velocity and displacement. And again, they're really similar ideas. And a lot of times in our everyday language, I was saying yesterday, we kind of use them interchangeably and kind of incorrectly. Uh, we mean velocity when we're saying speed or vice versa. Um, 
typically, and even in that one video, they said distance for everything when really, when they were talking for velocity, they should have been saying the word displacement. So even in that video, they kind of said it wrong. Um, but that's the only thing that's different is there's no direction. Okay, so if we have a distance of two meters, Notice, it could be going in any direction. Like, I don't know which way it's going, and it doesn't matter for this information. Speed of 40 kilometers per hour. Again, I don't know which way I'm headed. It doesn't seem to matter for this situation. Time will always be scalar, because it doesn't make sense that time would be in a direction. Time only moves one way. Oh. All right, so this is just kind of a, a graphic organizer. So we have physical quantities, and they're broken into the two types. Scalar, which has magnitude and units. Vector, magnitude, direction, and units. So notice, both of them have magnitude, both of them have units. The only difference is vector is direction as well. And I will warn you, it is easy to forget to include direction. So sometimes it's easy, like if you're just recognizing, it's like, yeah, that one's got direction, so it's vector. But if you're doing a displacement problem, sometimes it's easy to forget that you need to include that direction. Um, if you're doing a speed problem, you don't need to worry about direction. Right? So you have to keep these quantities separate so you know what you need to include and what you don't. The idea of them themselves is easy, though. It's just easy to forget which ones might need to include and which ones don't. Let's take a look at this. So we have a list. On your paper, if you want to take a second and write the letter S or the letter V to say if you think this is scalar or you think it's vector. And there's some other ones right there, kind of three-fourths of the way down the page. If you want to take a second and just see which ones you think are scalar and which ones are vector, then we'll go through them real quick. most of you have that done. So 16 years. Um, Miguel, what do you think? Scalar or vector? Yeah, right? <clears throat> Had no direction with it. What about 50 kilometers per hour? Sean, what do you think? Okay, do you see a direction? Oh, so it'd have to be scalar. So, Sometimes when you see, this is actually something called a derived unit. And we had it for density as well. It was, um, you know, a mass divided by a volume, right? So, um, you know, grams per um, centimeter cubed, right? This is a kilometer divided by an hour or per hour. It's taking two single units and combining them into a brand new unit where it's not just a kilometer and it's not just an hour. And so sometimes because it looks a little bit more complex, you'll think that it's vector, um, but really just ask yourself, do I see a direction? If yes, it's vector. If no, it's not. Oh, shoot. Sorry, clicked too fast. Here we have six kilometers north. North makes it vector. 2,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So I know that this is representing a density of some sort. What do we think, vector or scalar? Good, there's no direction. 800 kilograms. Good. 1.0 kilograms per week. Again, kind of a long set of units. What do you think? Very nice. Is it hard to keep saying scalar because I've done so many of them? And it makes me kind of twitch, like, oh gosh, can't be right. What do we think about this one? 20 meters per second south. 
Good. That sound tells us back here. 400 newtons down. Brian, we think. Good. In six centuries. It is Kayla. Good. Right? So, um, not too hard of a concept. So, we're going to look at our first scalar quantity, and that is distance. Distance is something that you guys have learned from, oh my gosh, you know, decades now, right? You've known this for a long time. Distance is, um, you know, like how, how far you've traveled, right? That's how we typically think of distance. It actually um, is a little bit more specific in our meaning in science, and it is in the entire pathway, right? So not just going from point A to point B, but how did I get there? What was my total trip? What pathway did I follow? That's what distance is. So I, I go out to my car this morning and I forget that I left my bag inside. So I have to walk back into the house and then back into the car. Well, I had a total trip, right? I made two trips. So my total distance, you know, was, you know, maybe, you know, 20 meters. Okay, we're gonna talk about something else called displacement. Displacement is where you look at where you started and where you ended. Well, I started at my car and then I realized I had to go back in. So then I went back in and then I came back out. So I ended at my car. So displacement would tell me that I actually didn't go anywhere at all because I started and stopped at the same point. But my distance, I actually took steps. I actually moved. I actually traveled a certain pathway in length. Right? So that's what distance is. It's the entire trip. So if you see this little bug, it, here's its distance, its total trip. Okay? Um, just like, let's say, um, you know, I, I go out to um, Las Vegas, about 1,800 miles. I drive there, I drive back. That's a long trip, right? 3,600 miles. But my displacement would technically be zero because I started at home and I ended at home. That 3,600 miles basically never seemed to happen if we're talking displacement. And obviously, distance, it, it, that's, that's a big trip, right? And so displacement is going to be kind of a more specific value. Um, and so we have to kind of pay a little bit of attention and make sure that we understand what's going on here. So it's when an object, um, it's a change in position, okay? And so it is going to be a vector quantity. So that means we have to include direction with that. All right, so distance, we didn't care. It's scalar, so we don't care if we were up, down, left, right, north, south, east, west, did not matter a bit to us. Displacement, though, is going to matter. And it is included. So if you look here, Here's my distance, this blue path, but my displacement is going from here to where I finished. Started, finished. And so it only measures the start to the finished, to the finished, start to finish, and so it has no cares how you got there. It doesn't matter if you spun around in circles for two hours and then started on your pathway, right? Displacement, you can do whatever. All it cares about is where you started and where you ended. And so to find displacement, we can find the change in position. So if we take our final position and we subtract it from our initial position, that's how we can get displacement. So this is our first equation for this unit. And I'll start kind of a running list on the board um, so that you can kind of keep track of all the stuff that we have. So remember this little triangle means change. So this is gonna be, um, we're gonna use X as kind of a generic horizontal position. It's just like on an axis, right? Your horizontal is your X. So we're saying, you know, a change in my horizontal position. So my east to west, my um, left to right kind of distant or displacement, right? That change. So what do you think this little f and this little i might mean? Any guesses? Very nice, final and initial. 
So you take your final position minus it from your initial, and then obviously that gives you the change. And you, usually the, the word change or difference is kind of a key that you're going to subtract, right? You've learned those kind of trigger words in math. Um, this can also be a vertical type of change. So we use the uh, variable y because that's your y variable on your, um, you know, on that vertical axis. So just like when we talk about displacement, if my, my original volume is, it looks like 3.4 um, milliliters, that's my initial, and then I go up to, gosh, it's hard to read, 5, right? I would take 5 minus my 3.4, and I would get 1.6. That would be my vertical change. So I started here and I went to here, okay? And that's all displacement really is. Um, it's not um, too complicated of an idea, um, but we will do some practice. So an ant walks to the left, just conveniently happens to be walking on a ruler, and begins at the 10 centimeter mark and stops walking at the 50 centimeter mark. What is the ant's displacement? So just like we did with density, we're going to always underline things that are given to us, like facts that are going to be useful, and then we're going to circle what we're trying to solve for. So it says circle what you're solving for. So what are we, what are we after here? What are we going to circle? Good. So let's circle the word displacement. Is that already circled on your paper? Okay. I thought it might be. Okay. So, um, now we're going to underline some things that we know. So let's underline our final position. So there's going to be some words that you're going to have to kind of pick up on. Stops, ends, um, those are going to kind of key you in that that's the final. So we're going to underline our 50 centimeters, and then we're going to write it in down here. That's our fine, our ant's final position. And then the initial position begins, starts, any of those words that kind of um, are associated with initial, that's going to key you in that that information is showing your initial. So we write it down here as well. So now we have all we need. Okay? The equation that we're going to use is xf minus xi, so the total displacement, we're going to have 50 centimeters minus 10 centimeters, and we are going to be left with an answer of 40 centimeters. Notice left, okay? Because that's the direction that the end is walking. And the easiest way, um, usually, like, a lot of times it will tell you, you know, it's moving to the left or moving to the west or moving down. Um, and I think sometimes it's easier, like for me, like if I even like think about it, if I'm having trouble with the, the direction, I think, okay, I'm gonna put my pencil and I'm gonna have my, my lead or my tip face the way that the, the motion is happening. So it's going to the left. So whatever direction I can visually see it pointing, that's the direction that I include in my units for my final answer. So this would be a three point problem. One for the magnitude, one for the correct unit, one for the correct direction. Okay, so even though it's a very simple problem, you know, I'm looking for three very specific things with it. Okay, so displacement is not always equal to the distance that is traveled, though. So a dog stands up from his bed. He walks five meters, stops, walks back, and goes back to sleep. The dog's displacement is zero because his initial position and his final position were both equal. So really, you don't even have to do any math with this. If you think logically, any time that an object starts and stops at the same position, it's always going to be zero. And a lot of times, and we're going to um, get into the habit of drawing this. So this 
So I'm going to say starts here, walks five meters, says he turns around, walks back. So this was my XI, and this is also my XF. Same place. Zero. Okay. And we're going to do a lot of practice. So um, we have some activities and things. So this will, and it seems really simple. Sometimes we'll look at some problems and it can be a little bit more confusing. Obviously, this is like the very basic, um, but we'll make sure that it, we get to um, where you feel pretty comfortable with it. So we have to include one more thing. Displacement can be positive or negative. Not like meaning a good thing or a bad thing, but we're meaning positive or negative, like kind of like on a number line. So if you think about right or east as being positive, okay, right, east, we also have up and north that are going to be positive, and we're going to have left and west, down and south as negative. So when using displacement vertically, obviously up and north is positive, and then that down and south. Does this remind you of anything? What do you think, Sean? Yeah, yeah like that coordinate plane system in, in math, right, where you have those four quadrants, right? Not to totally freak you out, I, I know math can be, you're like, great, I already have math once today, now I'm going to have it you know, two times a lot with our science. Quadrant one, two, three, four. You know, this is east, this is right, this is up, right? This is up, this is west, and this is left. This is south, this is down, this is west, right? This is down, this is south, this is east, right? So you have those things, and you guys are pretty good at knowing, like, okay, what's positive, what's negative there. So. The same things that follow in math for our coordinate plane system are the same you know, signs, negative or positive, that we're going to use for direction. So you should get really good. If I say down, you say negative. If I say up, you say positive, right? So those things you're going to definitely need to know because um, you know, sometimes we will just need to show like a negative sign, um, and that, that's showing us our direction. So that is... Um, you know, kind of the basics for for our distance and displacement. I need to go back. We have a video that we're going to watch. Um, this guy is really crazy. Um, he gets a little 